In this video, you will see how to take a soil sample, heat treat it so that only thermotolerant spores survive, carry out serial dilutions, and then plate these dilutions in conditions selective for streptomyces. Please see the lab manual for further details. We are taking our first sample from this garden just outside the Davidson building in the University of Glasgow. We'll take our sample using a 50 mil plastic corning tube. Without touching the soil or the inside of the tube, scoop up a small sample of soil and put the lid back on the tube. A similar sample was already collected from my garden at home. We will use the code D for Davidson Building and H for Home. We will now transfer a small sample into fresh sterile tubes. Using a sterile spatula, we can transfer into pre-weighed tubes and this way record the exact weight of each soil sample used. Sample H is 2.09 grams. We now do exactly the same thing for sample D. Sample D is 1.96 grams. Next, we are going to make Gauss number 2 agar plates and resuspend our soil samples in Ringer's solution. Gather everything you need. We melt a bottle of agar and pour plates as shown in a previous video. We will resuspend each soil sample in 25 milliliters of Ringer's solution. Then, using this 25 milliliter pipette and an automatic pipetter, we add the ringer solution to each soil sample. Make sure the lids are on tightly and shake the tubes vigorously to break up and suspend the soil samples. Shake the samples again to make sure they're fully resuspended and then we place in a water bath at 50 degrees centigrade for one hour. My old-fashioned timer seems to be broken. Let's try using modern technology instead. You can
can mix your tubes halfway through the incubation. And place back in 50 degree water bath for the remaining incubation time. It's now time to make our cereal dilutions. The aim here is to make a set of cereal dilutions. One in ten, one in a hundred, one in a thousand, and one in ten thousand dilutions. We start by labelling all our tubes and putting 900 microliters of Ringer solution into each of our dilution tubes. For each soil sample, I have labelled five tubes. Four tubes for the dilutions get 900 microliters each of Ringer solution. The extra tube is going to have the undiluted soil sample. Avoiding the solid lumps at the bottom, I take 500 microliters or so of the soil sample and place it in the undiluted tube. We will now start our cereal dilution from this sample. Using a P200 set on 100 microliters, we take 100 microliters of the undiluted soil sample and transfer it to our 10 to the minus 1 dilution tube, where it will be mixed with 900 microliters of Ringer solution. Vortex thoroughly to mix. We can now add 100 microliters of this 10 to the minus 1 dilution to 900 microliters of Ringer solution to make the 10 to the minus 2 dilution. Again, we vortex to mix thoroughly. Make sure you use a fresh yellow tip for each transfer. We pipette 100 microliters from the 10 to the minus 2 dilution into 900 microliters of Ringer solution to make the 10 to the minus 3 dilution. Mixing thoroughly, we repeat make the 10 to the minus 4 division. Also make a set of dilutions for soil sample D. Here the action is shown sped up.
we now have all of our soil sample dilutions ready. We also have poured eight Gauss number no. two agar plates containing cyclohexamide and another eight plates containing cyclohexamide and nalidixic acid. Cyclohexamide inhibits growth of fungi. Nalidixic acid inhibits growth of many gram-negative bacteria. We label our plates as described in the lab manual. We expect to obtain more colonies on the plate without nalidixic acid. For this reason, we only plate the undiluted cells on the plates with nalidixic acid. Turn the plates over, ready to pipette your cells. Pipette 100 microliters of the appropriate dilution in the middle of each plate. If we work quickly enough, we can pipette all of our cells onto all of our plates and then come back and spread them. If you think you might be slow, it is best to spread each plate immediately after you pipette the cells onto it. This avoids the cells drying into the plate and not giving you even spreading. Remember to vortex each dilution just before you use it. You can reuse the tip for the same dilution. Remember, the 10 to the minus 4 dilution was spread only on the plate with no nalidixic acid. We will spread the undiluted cells only on a plate with nalidixic acid. We are now ready to spread the bacteria on our plate. We're going to use a sterile disposable spreader. Spread the cells, then turn the plate and spread them some more. Your aim is to spread the cells evenly across the entire plate. You can reuse the same spreader as long as the cells are the same each time and you are increasing in concentration. You will only carry over a very small amount of cells over to the higher dilution. Remember to turn the plate after doing each set of spreading. Try to get the spreader into all of the corners of the plate. It's a good idea to keep the lid of the plate over the area where you're spreading to prevent contamination from falling onto your plate as you spread. I complete all of the plates with no nalidixic acid with one spreader before starting with a fresh spreader on the plates containing nalidixic acid. The process is repeated for all of the plates with nalidixic acid.
I'm worried that I might have contaminated the spreader at this point, so I get out a fresh spreader and use it for the final plate. Stack up the plates, ready to incubate at 30 degrees centigrade. It will take up to a week for your streptomyces to grow at this temperature. For soil sample H, I only have three plates left with nalidixic acid, so I leave out the 10 to the minus 3 dilution. In this speeded up footage, I pipette and then spread soil sample H dilutions onto Gauss number two plates, both with nalidixic acid and without nalidixic acid. All spreaders and other contaminated plasticware is disposed of in this plastic container with a lid. It will be sterilized by autoclaving. Plates are collected and taken to the incubator. Here they will be incubated at 30 degrees for up to seven days. Plates are placed in the incubator, lid side down, agar side up. The incubator is closed and will soon return to 30 degrees centigrade.